instructions printed for this one and we're just going to get straight into it. So the first thing that we do is we go to file and we hit save as and just make sure you choose your file path usually downloads or documents change it to an underscore two and save okay so now it's saved up there on the top and we'll get right into it step one Lindsay Sawyer is the director of recruiting and business development for Raybridge recruiting in Washington DC she has been analyzing sales and commissions for recruiters in an Excel workbook and has asked you to help her complete the analysis go to the sales worksheet Rename the sales worksheet as Sales and Dividends, which is a more accurate name. So we're going to right click and we're going to go <coughs> rename. So it's Sales and di oops. Dividends. Enter. Step two, unfreeze column A so it is not displayed when you scroll horizontally. So horizontally is this way. So if you scroll, see how you're this the column B is disappearing because column A has been frozen to stay where it is. So I'm going to click on this one and we're going to go up to view, refresh reuse panes right here, and I'm going to click unfreeze this pane. So now we're going to go, whoop, there we go, it's no longer frozen. Step three, middle align the contents of the merged cell A1. Here's A1. To improve the appearance of the worksheet title. So middle align, I think we did this one in an earlier project. So it's back on the home tab. And we aren't getting our A1, that's A2. There we go, it's not the picture. That's what was happening. I had a picture format show up here. So I was clicking on the picture, which means I wouldn't get any of the cell tools. See that? So there, you see how um, 1 and A to I is darkened a little bit, so that's the one that's selected, and um, my mistake was not realizing it said merged cell A1, so it was the whole merged thing. So this is what they're talking about, click on this, and middle align right now, you can see that it is bottom align, so we're going to do middle align, there you go, it looks a little better. Step four in cell B3, insert a formula that uses the now function to display today's date. Okay, so this one's a little different. Um, it's the same as any other formula. You put your equal sign in for the cell to recognize it as a formula. Then you start typing your now, or that's what I do anyway, and I'll just double click on it. And instead of typing anything into the bracket, you're just gonna close the bracket and okay. And it brings up today's date rather than a specific date, okay? For step five, fill the range C6, G10 with the formatting from the range B6, B10 to use a consistent, consistent number format for the sales data. So here's B6 to B10, and I use my fill handle to pull it over to G6, G10. Here's my copy options. And I want to, I want to fill fill the formatting only so that I still get all the same numbers and just follow over the accounting number style here. Okay, so step six, Lindsay wants to show the sales trend for each position and month from January to June. Provide this information as follows. In cell H6, insert a line spark line based on the data in the range B6, G6. So here's B6 to G6. When you highlight that range, you get a quick analysis tool. Click on that, and then you can choose spark lines and line, and it shows up right in H6. And then B says to use the fill handle to fill the range H7 to H10 without formatting based on the contents of cell H6. So based on this content, we're going to pull it down to H10, and we get these options again, and it asks us to do without formatting or without formatting. C, change the color of the spark lines in the range H6 to H10 to dark purple text 2. So because it's spark lines, it's kind of like a picture. We get new tools up here. So we can change the spark line color right here to fourth column, first row. That one. 
D, show a high point and a low point in the spark lens to make those values easy to identify. So high point, low points are over here. High point, low point, and you can see the little dots show up there. Okay. Step seven, copy the formula in cell I6 and paste it in the range I7 to I10, pasting only the formula and number formatting to include sales totals. So I'm gonna copy and I'm pasting it in I7 to I10. So I'm gonna highlight here and I'm gonna go up to my paste special because it wants me to only paste the formula and number formatting. So I need to values and number formatting oh, from there we go the formula and number formatting that's it step eight Lindsay wants to determine how the sales of each month contributed to the total sales calculate this information for her as follows a in cell B13, insert a formula without using a function that divides the total sales for January, cell B10, by the total sales in the date, cell I10. So we are going to not use a function, so no words, and divide the total sales for cell B10 by the total sales in cell I10. So you just go B10 divide by I10, enter. B, use an absolute reference to cell I10 in the formula. Well, it would have been helpful to have that up here. <laughs> okay, so an absolute cell reference is the dollar signs. You should have seen it in training. But what it does is it makes sure that it just references that specific cell. So say when, and I think the next one is to use a cell title. Yeah, so we're copying it over to G13. So I'll do that and I'll explain now. So it's copied over, but B10 is a relative cell reference, meaning it will change in reference to whether it changes columns or rows. So if it went down one, it would be, um, it would be, so if it goes to the right, it'll change to C, so like this, C, D, E, but if you're noticing the I is not changing, it stays the same. That's what an absolute cell reference does. When you copy or you use the fill handle, it will always only reference the exact same cell, and the reason for that is that this is, mm, 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 this is I10. So if we didn't use that, if we just took our absolute cell references out and then we copied it over, you would see that it would change to J, K, L, and there's nothing in those cells, so you're going to get an error. So that's why you need to change it to absolute cell reference because that's the only place where there's actually a value. Okay. Step nine, Lindsay also needs to calculate the dividends earned each month. If the company earns 200,000 or more in a month, the dividend is 35,000 of the sales. If the company earns less than 200,000 in the month, the dividend is 27% of sales. Calculate the dividends as follows. A, <coughs> in cell B17, Enter a formula that uses the if function. So formula is equals if function and tests whether the total sales for January is greater than or equal to 200,000. Okay, you can see the same thing. It gives you a hint as to where you, what you need to put in for your values. You can see it down here as well. So I'm just gonna stay down here. If you wanna be typing your formulas in the formula box up here, you're more than welcome to do so. I just do them down here just cause it's what I'm used to doing. 
So the logical test is going to be B10 um, is greater than, greater than or equal to 200,000. Okay, so if B says, if the condition is true, multiply, so the next value you need to put in is value of true, so that's what B is telling us to do. If the condition is true, multiply the total sales for January, B10, by 0 0.35 to calculate a dividend of 35%. So if this is true, we need to go B10 multiplied by 0 0.35 use our comma to get our next value <clears throat> and its value if false. So C will tell you what to use for that. If the condition is false, multiply the total sales for January, which is B10 by 0 0.27. And then when you're going to close your bracket, enter, and you get an answer. D, use the fill handle to fill the range C17, G17 with the formula in cell B17 to calculate the dividends for February through June. So they don't want you to do any special pasting, just a straight up fill. Step 10, change the spark lines in the range H17 and H18 as follows to use a more meaningful format. So A, change the column spark lines to line so I'm going to select them and I get my new sparkline tool to show up here. So I want to change them to a line. So the types are over here. So now they're more coherent with the other sparklines on this worksheet. B, apply the sparkline style dark gray, sparkline style dark number three. So sparkline styles are right here. So I'm going to click on this guy and have a little look around and see. So it says third column, fifth row. Third column, one, two, three, four, five. Dark gray sparkling style, dark number three. Perfect. Step 11, Lindsay would like to increase the average number of placements per month because executive placements are the most profitable. Lindsay wants to know how many executive placements she needs to reach the goal of 30 placements per month. Use Goal Seek to set the average number of placements for all positions, cell I-27, to the value of 30 by changing the average number of executive placements, cell I-23. So Goal Seek is going to be in the Data tab, and it's under the What If Analysis. Alright, so we click on Goal Seek and we need to set the cell. So we need to pick which one that we need to set. So it tells us in this uh, instructions, use Goal Seek to set the average number of placements for all positions, cell I-27, to the value of 30 by changing cell I-23. Okay, so if you read it out, you can figure out which one is which. So I27 goes here. You need to set I27 to the value of 30 by changing I23. Okay. It is currently goal seeking. Okay, we are good. So it's set I27 to 30 and it gave us an answer for I-23. It gave us what this needs to be in order for us to find 30 in this cell. Step 12, format the text in cell J-22. To clarify what it refers to as follows. A, merge and center the range J-22 to J-27. Okay, so Immersion Center is going to be in the Home tab, right here. We did this one in an earlier project. B, rotate the text down to negative 90 degrees in the merged cell so that the text reads from the top to bottom. So we need to format the cell 
and alignment, right? So we need to go, you can type in negative 90 if you like, I'm just, there you go, negative 90. So it reads from the top to the bottom. C, change the width of column J to six. So here's column J. And if you remember earlier, we right click, ooh, yes. <laughs> column width, we in our shortcut menu, we only get this, we don't get auto fit. So I'm just gonna type in six, okay. Step 13, delete row 35, which contains information Lindsay doesn't meet, need anymore. Okay. So click on the row, right click, and delete. Step 14, our last step. Lindsay also wants to compare the estimated sales of July and December. Insert a chart that provides this information as follows. 14A. Create a cluster column chart based on the non-adjacent ranges A22 to B26 and G22 to G26. Okay, so we did this one in an earlier project, selecting non-adjacent ranges. So A22, here's A22 down to B26. So I'm going to select that. Now to select the non-adjacent range, I'm going to click, right now I'm going to click and hold on my control button, and I'm going to go over to G22 and G G22 to G26, so I'm going to start highlighting G22 to G26, and now I'm letting go of both my mouse and my control button, and they both stay selected. So now I'm going to insert a cluster column chart, so I'm going to go up to insert, and here are the column charts, yes. I'm going to go to more column charts to make sure I get the right one. Here we go. Whoa. So this is a clustered column chart. It is the default. So I'm going to click OK and in pops the chart. B, enter estimated sales July and December as the chart title. So that's the sh obviously your chart title right here. And estimated sales July and December. Okay. Resize and reposition the chart so its upper left corner is in cell A35 and lower right corner is in cell E49. So resize and reposition the charts. Upper left. Upper left. Is in A35. Okay, so I'm just going to have to move it down for now because I can't just resize it like that. So, ooh, darn. I need to make sure, so this happened earlier with another student um, accidentally moving this around instead of the actual chart. So if that happens, you can go to your home and click your undo button and a sh keyboard shortcut is control Z. So I'm going to move this to A35 in the top left corner and lower right is cell E49. So it's a little bit like Step D, change the chart layout to layout 2, so I need to click back in my chart so I get my chart design, and t -t 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 chart layout. Layout, 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 quick layout, here we go, quick layout, layout 2, what's this one? One I would assume. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've got it all done, I'm going to click my save button up here. My name is already changed, so I'm going to submit it to Sam for grading. Thank you for following along, and we'll see you in the fourth one.